This is a QNAP NAS server. It was given to me by a friend after I went through one too many power surges and didn't survive the last one. The model is the TS-451, and I'm told that it's very similar to others in the X-51 series. Now, there's great videos and documentation for the common problems that these have, mainly involving a clock pin that needs to be pulled up or pulled down with the resistor to put it back into the correct logic levels, although this did not have that problem. It had the same symptoms of lights on the panel here turning on, but the unit not actually booting up all the way and not beeping. That was one of the critical symptoms. I got inside here, found a different cause for the same symptoms, and I thought I'd make a video to show anyone that's having boot up problems on this and maybe try this in addition to that clock pin fix. I read through several helpful Reddit posts and ultimately followed this excellent video by YouTube user Power Evolutions, which had me open up the NAS, pull out the main board, identify a header which was on the board, and hook up to it with my oscilloscope. Pin one is the clock signal for the NAS CPU, and pin eight is a ground. By connecting through those two, my oscilloscope showed the high and low levels of the clock signal, which in my case were 0.88 volts for low, and a VMAX or high level of 3.64 volts, right at 25 megahertz. So that's pretty standard for what you would expect for a high and low signal, and I had to look elsewhere. So next I scoured the board for anything that may have let the smoke out, and sure enough, I found one of these telltale pinholes on a capacitor. When you see one of these dots on a surface mount component, it usually indicates an internal short that melted through the case. So I desoldered, verified the failure off board, and started looking for replacements. And here's where I made a mistake, because these are polarized tantalum capacitors, where the number on top is in microfarads, whereas I use the convention for ceramic capacitors, where the numeric code on top leads you to capacitance in picofarads. So I definitely replaced a 330 microfarad capacitor with one that was only 33 picofarads. Quite a difference. However, I'm not surprised that it worked because before I replaced the capacitor at all, I did fire up the board and it functioned fine. I guess that's because there's five of these tantalum capacitors in parallel, four on top, one on the bottom, and any one of them is only contributing to one fifth of the whole. That also means you could probably make this repair by just desoldering a bad capacitor and not replacing it at all. I plugged in network and power, turned on the unit, and heard the beep that I always should have had, which indicated that it was fully booted up, and I was able to see it in the QNAP QFinder software. So the next step was just to initialize and configure the NAS, and everything looks to be working properly. So this was a fun little project and I'm happy to have kept this out of the landfill, although I don't have a use for it immediately, I'm sure I will find one. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit like, but in any case, thanks for watching.